So an iNaturalist, I go by real life ecology. Uh, my name is Jonathan Carpenter, but most of my friends call me JC. That's my, my trail name, I guess. And um, yeah, uh, real life ecology tends to be like the name that actually most people know me by these days because uh, iNaturalist has become such like a major part of my life and my, the science that I do, my career, and uh, all the outdoor education outreach too. So honestly, I tell a lot of people like, oh, I'm, I meet people on the trail and I'm like, oh, I'm real life ecology. So I stumbled on iNaturalist and what, you know, what really like uh, took me on that was iNaturalist has the full coverage of biodiversity and it also has this, you know, of course, the, the, uh, the GIS interface as well. And so it, it was kind of the perfect thing. I think it was about two years ago that I really started using it. But um, this year I've kind of just gone crazy on it just for uh, just to see how far I can push it, if you will, you know, but yeah, you're a leader with I think over 14,000 observations in 2016 and about 4,000 not yet entered. Okay. I, I believe in big data. So for me, big data is is kind of like it's, it's what we need in order to catch up with um, just a general the general sciences that are going on out there, like every type of science that we think of now, like medical science or even like planetary science, like all of these things, the paradigm has shifted just recently because of this concept of big data. And uh, for decades, we've been saying that we've been having this like mantra in conservation biology that we're collecting data to use it for conservation. And uh, the issue is like on, you know, a grandiose scale, on a global scale, it's hard to imagine how, um, without everybody coming together, with everybody just collecting their own data, like how we can get this like grandiose perspective, this paradigm shift in ecology that we need in order to actually apply um, biodiversity to conservation biology on a large scale. And uh, without a doubt, um, you have to have open source platforms to do that. And there's really, the limit is there's really not enough scientists, uh, professional scientists, let's say, because my, my belief is that we're all scientists by like nature. I kind of go with the uh, the Aristotle concept of science, of just like science is a process of discovery. And um, so we're, we're all scientists by nature. And so there's really not enough professional scientists on the ground to be able to collect enough of that data, I believe, to create this like real data perspective and give us like a new paradigm shift in ecology to unravel like some of the obvious things like climate change, uh, pollination factors, host species relationships, like those kind of things can really fit into this big data spectrum. And um, we really just need more and more and more data. And the reality is, is that everybody has a smartphone these days. So since that's the case, suddenly we have like this giant growing population we know of and simultaneously everybody's very focused on advances in technology well those advances in technology have the ability to make everybody uh, a scientist and what's what's really great about these systems that a lot of people don't realize if you're not familiar with iNaturalist you're not familiar with um, the the process of learning through open source databases is that we've changed the system to where instead of having to be a professional to go out and look things categorize things and try to make some sense out of things we've now like in, embarked on this system where the process of learning about something for yourself can contribute legitimate data even new data to science like maybe even the discovery of a new species certainly like species within like uh, a part of its range that we didn't know it was there or maybe like uh, an invasive species that's come into a place that uh, it's on the watch list we've been looking for maybe the species might show up and the fact is is people just walking out and saying what kind of snail is that can just be like taking a picture and in the process of you learning about it it actually drops a point down on a map and it's it's forever data and so um, yeah, I think that I think that the big data question is um, probably the most important question in conservation biology as an, a whole ecological approach.